welcome to the show. Don't forget to hit uh, the thumbs up, by the way, at the beginning of the show. Really helps build that crowd in here. You know, get some get some people in here noticing the place. Because, uh, hey man, if we don't do that, there ain't no way people are going to find it. We are in, listen here, we up there near like 47K supporters. But we are, my, we're like, we in the swampland. We in the, we in the deep reeds, son. We up in the hills of the internet, okay? And the only thing going to let people know we're here, besides the smell, is of course going to be if y'all light a fire. So, light, come on, light that fire up. Give them thumbs. Come on. That's how we do it. Now, um, thank you. Thank you, Picus. Um, now, this, uh, um, CSL and I are both under the same theory that um, that tr <laughs> that Trump does these videos at Mar-a-Lago two at a time because he's always wearing the same tie for two of them in a row and they just knock him out and then he goes back to golfing or whatever the fuck and he hates doing them you can tell they're uncomfortable they have to do a lot of cutting we've seen that already and because uh, he does that like lurchy shit with his whole body like yeah, it's it's amazing um but I, I think my favorite thing is when the words seem to hurt some of the words just look like they like like something's lodged someplace and they won't come out um the other thing i have the theory is is that they have to do these to justify campaign expenditures. So if he cranks these out, then technically speaking, he can use these as evidence when he drops out and people go, wait a minute, this motherfucker was never going to run for president in the first place. He was just gathering money and then he was, and then he never spent it on a real campaign and they sue him and then they can't do anything because he's got a bunch of these stupid two minute videos. Okay. So, and they all start with this weird silent graphic. Uh, just not, just, what a cheap son of a bitch. Like, you're a billionaire, in theory. Wouldn't you buy a theme song outright for your stuff? Wouldn't you just have a composer? Shit, you'd probably do it in a foreign country so you wouldn't have to pay residuals. Hire the Hungarian Philharmonic to play a few notes for you. Play it at the top and bottom. Right? I mean, if you're a billionaire, what the shit? All right. It's all, it's, I mean, he's not, so is the point, but here we go. Oh, and this is him uh, leaving and saying goodbye and saying hello, but the closest picture they had of him doing a Hitler salute, you know, <laughs> believe me, that, that hand's going to start drooping down over time just to, you know, n you know, massage the base. We have two cent oh, shit. This is not going in my headphones for some reason. Um... And God knows. All right, here we go. This, this should be it. We have two standards. All right, here we go. Standards of justice in our country. Uh, regular and unleaded. One for people like you and me. There are no people like you. Don't fucking drag me into your personal hell, you dumb motherfucker. I, uh, w uh, there's, there, maybe for pussy grabbers and, and dudes who've been trying to like dodge sexual assault claims their whole fucking life. Guys who... Um, used campaign funds to pay off prostitutes and and uh, and porn stars and and abortions and all kinds of shit. People who signed Bill Clinton when they flew to Epstein's island, like that'll get them. That kind of shit. Like that. There's no you and me. I don't know where the fuck. How did this motherfucker become blue collar all of a sudden? People like you and me who really have to. What, you know, get their lawyers off of late night infomercials and people who choose their friends by who they see praising them on television. That's how you know a friend is a friend. And one for the corrupt political class of which there which, are many. <laughs> there are many corrupt political classes. I think he means members of that political class. Like there's a lot of people in that particular class, but I'm just going to... for. For you and I, I'm going to go with, uh, he just thinks there's like one shitty little tear with you and me and him. We're all alone and we get stomped on by the man. And then everybody else gets their own little division. Of which there are many. I don't know what I just said. 
<laughs> Sorry. At the very same moment when my ultra-secure Mar-a-Lago home was raided by the FBI. Okay, first of all, never raided. They got a search warrant. They knocked. They were allowed in. Nobody came into a fucking skylight. Nobody busted in through the fucking sewers like it's the goddamn rock. <laughs> it wasn't a raid. They didn't just, everybody on the fucking floor, back it up, back it up. Like, get the fuck out of here. They, they served a warrant. His lawyer made phone calls. It was boring as shit. And calling it a raid is a middle finger to the FBI agents who acted very professionally. So fuck him and fuck that. And, and secondly, ultra secure. Do I have to bring up Anna de Rothschild again? The motherfucker rents the place out. What's ultra secure about that? The, the, the Secret Service doesn't vet every guest for every fucking wedding. Ugh. Joe Biden was harboring classified documents in his China-funded pen center. <laughs> he was harboring them like, like fugitives <coughs> and uh, at his China-funded pen center. Um, were, obviously, Penn State had no say in it. China-funded it. This is why, if you look... It's why all he's done since he got in office is kiss China's ass. Tweeting out things like, I think she is being very professional about the whole COVID thing. Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> I, I got, oh, oh, shit. So I got into it on Truth Social, kind of for the fun of it, because it was kind of stupid. I decided, um, if you ever go on Truth Social, God forbid, and you look at most of what Trump posts is like retruths of uh, um, retruths of other people's memes that support him and these accounts and all of the ones that post these, they're all like Patriot Dog and USA number one fucking account, whatever. They're all QAnons. They're all of them to the person. If they're not, it's either a, a bot, like a foreign run account or a QAnon or both. And like, I hit one today that was a real person. And I could tell by the... You know, I looked at their account to see if they were a real person. And they... Okay, so he he misspelled the word stolen in his most recent post about the rigged and stolen election. He put two L's in stolen. And um, the whole feed under his thing is a bunch of people going, stolen is... He did it on purpose... And the word stolen, uh, if you do the numerological code, is 586, which leads to uh, a QAnon post from January 22nd. And that it's January right now. And that one was in 2018. And it never fucking came true. And it's been four fucking years. But January 22nd is coming around again. It's not January 22nd. It's days away. But that's how we... Ah. Anyway, so I obviously laughed at these fuckers and went and I, I just had to say something because there's a bunch of them and I was like okay let me get this straight so this dickhead who is 90% ego makes himself look like an asshole on purpose with shit like kofefe and misspelling normal words and shit grammar Makes himself look like a complete dick to, like, just to send codes to these kind of folks so that they can trace them to Q posts that never came true. That, that's, that's the plan. That's what you guys worked out. That was, that's the arrangement that, that this fucking, Loser, uh, has he was like, I know if I use like first letters and they line them up and they actually do work, people will figure out the code. Like, I mean, I'm I can't go straight up Zodiac killer on this. So, how, how about this? How about every time I slapdash look like a dickhead writing something we just pretend it was on purpose that's it what kind of response did you get i the first one i got was 
Because I the first one I said I was like gibberish. And the guy was like, how so? And and the guy well, let's see. Shit. Hold on. Let me hold on. Let me see if because uh, uh fuck, it won't come up. I it won't be able to find my account on there. Yeah, shit. Um I'll post a picture of it uh, after this. But the main idea that this guy came back with was, uh, well, it got you talking about it, and that's the whole thing. is because you think we look silly, but you're the one spreading the message. And I'm like, okay, first of all, asshole, we're not talking about it. We're laughing about it. You look like an asshole. And it is a conversation point at, you know, amongst people that, Again, this moron willfully looks like a dickhead to the entire world so he can pass codes to a bunch of assholes who believe stuff that absolutely is not true on a material basis. This date came, this thing did not happen. This date came, this thing did not happen. It's not even fucking like, oh, maybe if you shuffle it, he meant in 1802 instead of 2018. Like, get the fuck out of here. So, um... Uh, his his response was, uh, you know, we got you talking. And I'm like, we're talking about it, but we're talking about it like when you're eating fries and there's some burnt ones and you have a mild conversation about what what's uh, crispy, too crispy and burnt. You know that conversation that you've had dozens of times? And then... You know, it doesn't harangue you. It doesn't affect how you vote. It's just kind of a, like, oh, that's interesting, right? This this is, everything about Trump right now, to me, is like Harry and Meghan level stuff. Like, it's, it's toilet paper talk about current something. The current something. The more people are calling you a dipshit, the more powerful you are. That, that's, that, to some degree, that was their theory. Anyways, again, back to this guy who looks like he is shitting out words. And his unsecured garage, right on the floor, piles of paper. The f <laughs> okay, first of all, n no, like, not right on the floor, piles of paper. That was your office, fuckwad. <laughs> the, 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 they show a picture of, of Biden pulling his Corvette out, and there were boxes, and there was a box in the garage that's like a legal box. And everybody's saying that's where it was. Because that's the box that's visible. But it's not at all where any of this shit was. Like, for all we fucking know, there's an attic space above the garage. And that's what they were talking about. They could be fucking file cabinets that are locked in the garage. Who cares? But, it like, the assumption is, is that it was that pile. This, this dipshit is literally thinking that he, he just, he's he just making this up. He's just saying that. The box was on the floor, therefore the documents were on the floor, therefore that, and that that box was the one that had the documents in the first place. When we know for a fact, he had boxes and, and, and had top secret documents hidden between photos that he had had framed of him like, I don't know, giving a reach around to Kim Jong-un or whatever the fuck. And he'd hidden them in between to sneak them out in between these frames. That's where they were found, including these folders that were now empty. And they laid them out to show the what was from this particular box. They put a little triangle, go, here's the, what we have. And he was like, I didn't spill these all over the floor. And you're like, motherfucker, that's how, this is an evidence gathering thing. They're keeping track of what they got from where. We all knew this. Anybody who's watched a fucking... CSI or Law and Order episode episode knows this, and yet he's still griping about it. That's where this comes from. Floor was probably very wet and damp, as many garages are. <laughs> <laughs> this top secret. Not only were they, not only was the knock list exposed that gave away where our spies are hidden. In, in the former Czech Republic and parts of Macedonia to to kill Russian assassins, but they're wet. Oh, sticky. <laughs> Get the when fuck. When my ultra secure Mar-a-Lago home was raided by the FBI, Joe Biden was harboring classified documents in his China-funded Penn Center <clears throat> and his unsecured garage, right on the floor, piles of paper. 
The floor was probably very wet and damp, as many garages are. <laughs> that's uh, that's because a lot of times, I guess Trump can't hold his bladder when he rides back from the golf course and he just pees in the garage on the tires of his golf cart. Yet while I'm being persecuted by Trump-hating special counsel, I call them special prosecutors, but this one in particular is a prosecutor. And, and, and no, he isn't. They'll have a prosecutor. They, they, they'll be somebody else that does this. Uh, but also, um, he's lately he's been he's been trying to fire up the nickname machine again, you know. And he thinks his latest, like the unselect committee, was like the fucking latest magic. Like, he is completely convinced. Remember, this is the man who hated the idea of MAGA. He didn't like Make America Great Again. He didn't like using that phrase. Somebody else talked him into it, and then it became totally associated with him. And occasionally during his speeches, we've seen him do it. He'll he'll go, it wasn't, you know, I, I it wasn't all sold on it. But then I came around, and it's pretty good, pretty good. That kind of shit, right? Meanwhile, he thinks unselect committee is fucking genius. But he also thinks that by, like, swapping people's job descriptions, it qualifies as a dig, as opposed to just whining. Executed by Trump-hating special counsel. I call them special prosecutors, but this one in particular is a prosecutor and a Trump deranged person. A Trump deranged person. I, you know, who would I, who qualifies as a Trump deranged person besides you? Uh, Kimberly? Yeah. Yeah. Kimberly Gilfoyle seems like a Trump deranged person. Like, like she was, her derangement was caused by her proximity to Trump's. <laughs> a Trump deranged person of sorts of things. They prosecute all sorts of things. He prosecuted war crimes and war criminals. You're 55 seconds in. Cut. Let's go back to one. Let me get it fresh. Like, he... I, I was, Honestly, this train left the tracks a long fucking time ago. Who jerked the wheel? Joe Biden, in the meantime, is being given white glove treatment by a establishment hack. A establishment hack. Hack. Um, I just can you? I I I almost wish. This is just so nice. It's just so nice. If I may. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, I mean, of course, of course. Come on. <laughs> can I? Can I is, is it? Is it that hard? Hold on. He prosecuted war crimes and war criminals. Joe Biden, in the meantime, is being given white glove treatment by a establishment hack who tried to cover up the Russia hoax. He actually tried to cover it up. Oh my God, had the nerve of him. And you appointed him. Is there no loyalty in the world? It's, it's almost as if um, anybody that isn't family or equally up to their fucking larynx in criminality with this fucker um, hangs around him for a little while gets a glimpse of what he's like and the kind of shit he does and instantly goes, holy fuck, this guy's a criminal. In which case, Trump considers that person to be disloyal. It's a travesty. Biden lied to the American people and weaponized the Justice Department, or as I call it, the Injustice Department. <laughs> Zing! Wow. Um... First, it was unselect. Now it's injustice department. It's, uh, he's getting sharper all the time, you know. 
Go gone are the days of weak sauce like Crooked Hillary and Little Marco. This is, this is the new hotness. Fuck. To go after me for the very crime he actually committed. And he wasn't president, so he didn't have the right to declassify. Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Bi uh, Biden had the right to declassify and classify documents because Obama signed an executive order, I think it was 13352, that uh, gave him that right. Hold on. Um, one more time, if I may. Give me a second. Um, um, Mm, this is going to be very disappointing. <laughs> Biden did have the authority to declassify documents as vice president. Only difference is he's not claiming that's what he did. He's saying that those things were m like mistakenly uh, removed or, or copies of them were mistakenly kept with his other stuff. And that's why they returned him immediately. Um, this is a blah, 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 clown show, blah, blah, blah. Um... Because of a 2009 executive order signed by President Barack Obama. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much. Um, now, Obama signs an executive order. Gives Biden the right to classify and declassify documents. Um, this happens before this man is president. He's, he's president for four fucking years. Think of, if you will, the details you would know after you had been president president for four years. Imagine you're president for four years after this guy. What do you think dinner conversation would be around White House staff and people who work there and guards and whatever the shit, cooks, the fucking Secret Service, shit talking this guy for six months after you left or after he left and you're sitting there, you're 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 there. You, you wouldn't know that he what rights and privileges he had or thought he had. He wants to be unpeached, right? I call it the unpeachment. As I did. The difference is that while I did everything right, I did nothing wrong. <laughs> nothing. You're right. You did uh, nothing wrong. And in a, in, in a specific way, there's a specific area where Trump did nothing wrong. there, and, and it was one area, it was one where Republicans wanted him to do a lot of wrong things. And he managed to do almost none of them. Like the tax break and the, and the you could argue that the Supreme Court, that was something that Mitch McConnell did. He did nothing unright. I call it unwrong. Biden did everything wrong. Wrong. The boxes hoax should be dropped immediately against President Trump. <laughs> are you reading someone else's notes? Or are we just going full, like, sports figure talking about yourself in the third person? When I return to the White House, we will... <laughs> You're, it's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. I'm just saying. Uh, I, am I on a, a, a YouTube app? I, yeah. In the era of partisan witch hunts, restore equal justice under the law and get back to government that delivers for the American people. And I mean securing our borders, creating millions and millions of jobs just like before. You lost millions and millions of jobs. Oh, you mean before this video, what Biden is doing? I see. Before... Before you tape this, Biden has already created millions and millions of jobs. Okay, I'm with you. Uh. Growing wages, stopping violent crime, and making our country great again. That's what we want to do. It's so what we want to do. And if only I had had four years where I was president of the United States and I had my hands on the controls and my fingers on the buttons and my, my it, grip on the pussy... You would have seen something so good, but unfortunately, I was never allowed to be the president I knew I could be because of the fake news and the meanness and, and quite frankly, a lot of golf. I was golfing a lot. 
Make America great again. Thank you. Oh, it's up to me now? Great. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm doing my best. I voted for people who are actually doing it. We do have an infrastructure bill now. On the baseline. Like, let's just say everything in Biden's agenda is a fucking wash. It never amounts to anything. But he did manage to get all the lead pipes in the country taken out and replaced over his presidency. That alone, like decade changing, never mind all the other cool shit. You're, and by the way, uh, to all the QAnons who are now going, my God, this the, the internet's gotten so fast lately. I can I can see how wrong I was so much quicker now, thanks to rural broadband. Good for you. That's it. Uh, that's, that's the whole thing. Make America great again. Cut. Um, it's uh, it's magnificent. 